Moin Leute, äh, willkommen zu einer neuen Folge dieses Podcastes. Äh, die wird heute mal ein bisschen anders sein, denn äh, sie wird heute auf Englisch stattfinden. Denn wir haben heute den wundervollen Federico da. Der kommt aus Italien und ist ein Hersteller für Lenkräder. Aber das werdet ihr gleich in der ganzen Podcast-Folge äh, hier erfahren. Und wir wechseln jetzt auf Englisch. Ihr könnt unten den Untertitel anmachen, wenn ihr möchtet. Und dann könnt ihr dieses Gespräch, falls ihr das Englischen nicht mächtig seid, auch verfolgen. So, Federico, I said to the people, hello, you are from uh, Italy and you just decided to do probably one of the greatest wheels at the moment for a very good price. So, Federico, the stage is yours. Maybe you can say who you are and what you do in like two sentences before we jump into this conversation. Okay, so yeah, I'm Federico, I'm 27 years old at the moment. I'm from Monza in Italy. I live near the, the Autodrome of the Monza. When, from, from when I was born, I, I was born into like engines and, and stuff. Uh, at four years old, I began to uh, do some races with mini motorcycles. Then I get, went to kart. Then I stopped my motor racing real life career. And then I started to build and use racing simulators from like 2011, I started my journey into this amazing world. And after a lot of experiments and stuff like that, I, me and my dad decided to go for something serious, more like official. So we created Grey Wolf Technologies, basically, and the wheel that maybe we, were, we will talk about today. Oh, I guess we are not only talking about the wheel because when I see your camera, there's like, you know, you, you have something little in the yeah. background, <laughs> which, are you, <clears throat> which uh, are you very passionate about. So can you please tell us why you have a half of a formula car in your room? So, yeah, basically, this is one of our experiments that I was talking about as like the entire car is made by by us basically by me my dad and some collaborators that helped us to like design and do the molds with the fiberglass because that car is made of fiberglass basically uh, so yeah basically all the project has been developed by us with the motion with the boxes this car behind me has four d boxes to the front to in the back and yeah all the interior of the car the pedals the wheel and everything into it has been developed by us too. So yeah, there, are, they, they, there were a lot of experiments on that car. And so yeah, that car basically is something that we love, we loved creating. And it's like our path, our school, where we learned a lot of things. And then we took everything that we learned and we put it all into the product that we're like watching today. But yeah, you know, we can talk about Pretty everything that is into this room, I can show my old works. All the experiments are like into this room as well. So maybe I can show the, the path that we have from the first wheel to the last wheel and to the GWT that is our first official wheel. I would like to do that, but I have one question. What did you learn as a job? Like for, for, with the simulators? What, no, what just like, no, you, you probably went to school, right? And after that yeah. you had oh, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. what did you do? Or did you just like learn something with uh, technology? So no. you're, oh, okay. Nothing yeah. about technologies. Like everything I know, basically I learned on the track when I was younger mm -hmm. and I was racing. So I learned the basics of like, how a go-kart works, how a steering wheel works, mm -hmm. but in the real, in the real life. Uh, I had the opportunity to sit into an F4 car when I was younger, so I, I remember how it looks inside, the, the, the FOV from inside the car, the wheel, how big it is, how the handles are fit, how the handles are, and the buttons and, and everything like that. So I learned it on the field. The school, I like studied economics, so nothing that is linked with everything yeah. we're doing in here. So no technology, nothing about like mechanical schools and stuff like that. So yeah, nothing about anything that can like in, in a certain way look, look good to study for, do something like this. But yeah. It's actually really funny because you did something so different to what you do today. And then you just followed your passion to do... 
Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing today? Yeah. So today, basically, we started this little startup that is basically me mm -hmm. and my dad helping me. And I'm trying to develop as many projects as possible. Right now, I we finished our first real project that that is this wheel right here. And and yeah. So basically, I'm continuing developing it. Uh, listen to customers, to, to our first customers, talking to people, learning, and trying to like do the best that we can to like let people know about this wheel, to let people like buy this wheel and make people happy, basically, because I want the people that to, to make the people that use this wheel basically happy and and yeah, giving them something that is good to use, beautiful maybe aesthetically and flawless basically so i don't want people to get angry with the wheel basically <laughs> <laughs> that's, people that's don't get angry with the wheel right yeah right. that's the first mission because technology <clears throat> drives you crazy completely a lot of times like pcs yeah and everything that is like electronic based yeah yeah it can drives you crazy but yeah that's... so we are trying to to not make you crazy basically <laughs> that's a funny thing because like when later when we go in, in into the wheel uh for a bit um we we like you and me we had two very long calls about the wheel and you yeah. showed me everything and i totally get where you're coming from when you say i don't want that people get angry with technology like when when you talk about your wheel and i guess everyone will see that later it's like Yeah, he's doing it so you fall in love with it and you, you don't want to smash it into a wall because you get angry. It's uh, really nice. So uh, you told me, like you, you said to the viewer that you have, um, you did some projects earlier on. Yeah. Do you have like your first wheel on hand so we can see that? So the first, yeah, what not you... the first, but like the second or, or third. Yeah, that's moment. fine. That's fine too. Yeah, yeah. So we can okay. see where you started. Yeah, yeah, just... Just give me a minute. Yeah, we have time. No worries. So, like, this is one of the first, maybe the second ever wheel that we made. It's a replica. I think you already seen it. Yeah, I did. And it's something that is like the the old Audi R10 wheel. Yes. So yeah, this thing basically comes from 2010. And yeah, this you... wheel basically was really simple. Uh, I can, like, uh, tell you... What is all about? Basically, we mounted a Slipro in on yeah. the top of it, and this thing right here was like one of the first devices that worked with telemetry on on simulators on PCs. Yeah, and could like uh, get uh, I think 24 inputs at this maximum power. So mm -hmm. yeah, all the inputs that you were seeing here went straight into this thing because. On the top, you have all these little pins yeah. that you have to like sold with every bu every single button. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of hard to like create something like this in the past. It it, it is a again, it's not simple. But yeah, at that time, you were like pretty limited with power yeah. connections and stuff like that. So yeah, this was a pretty good wheel, I think. It was it had. A simple, a simple shifter on the back. Yeah. Nothing magnetic, nothing too futuristic. So, uh, just a mechanism that allows yeah. you to switch gears, basically, nothing else. And yeah, you've, you've had two encoders, like radio stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Not an automotive grade. Uh, simple buttons with no feedback at all. <laughs> And yeah, you, uh, you've had... Like these two encoders were actually good. You can maybe hear it. Yeah, yeah. And those two were like saying to these two mini displays uh -huh. what to display. So basically, these had 12 positions, and in the software you could choose 12 different data to see. Oh, on here. yeah, all yeah. right. So maybe the first was speed, then RPMs, best lap, current lap, and yeah. etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so yeah, you, was, this was the first ever thing that we made. So you did that in 2010? Yeah. Yeah, th 10, 11. Yeah, it was like... I, I was so young. My father did it. I, I did nothing. <laughs> oh, I, I, I see, yeah, I see. I, I, I only said to him, okay, let's do this wheel because it's good. Yeah. And yeah. he said, yeah, all right, all right, Federico, yeah, let's go. Right. Let's so go 
you kind of learned from your dad too, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything I learned, the 90%, I think we oh. learned, like I learned from him, but we learned together mm -hmm. as well, because I was the one searching on the internet how to do things, because it's, it, the cool fact is that my dad cannot use a computer. <laughs> All right. He cannot use a computer. Like if I, t if I tell him nowadays in this moment, if I'm away from home and I need my PC to be ready because I don't know, I'm in a hurry. No. Yeah. And, and I said to him, yeah, can, can you switch on my PC? Uh, no. No. I can't. I, I'm not feeling it. So, so something will break if I touch it. Okay. <laughs> but when so you he, when you think about it like yeah. he, he <laughs> built like really crazy stuff but he's scared yeah. of a computer that's it's not yeah. funny it's uh like it's a it's a different time right yeah 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 basically he's older than me it's quite older it's 70 years old yeah. at the moment so when we started the oldest thing he was like 60 or near 60 years yeah. old so it's difficult to like learn using a pc at 60 years old, if you never used one in your entire life, because he, in his real profession was like aquariums, you know? Oh, Fishing. all right, yeah. Yeah, okay. He was building aquariums for a lifetime. Then oh, he, he did? Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this, this really big ones or just like the small yeah. one? Yeah, oh. we have like a gigantic one in our living room. Oh, is he Nowadays. still doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's empty at the moment. It's yeah, all right. here, like it's a, as a memorabilia. But yeah, he, he did like something, some crazy project, like entire floors made out of aquariums. Yeah, he, he was like doing crazy stuff at the time. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> great, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Basically, he was doing aquariums. I was studying economics. And so, yeah, let's build simulators. No sense. <laughs> like if you if you um take out your your wheel which you're selling, which yeah. was the the favorite wheel you built? Oh, Pers it's... your your personal favorite. But that I built or yeah. that exists? Yeah, or that, that, I, that you built. Okay, okay. So uh, I think I can show two wheels because they are from two different eras. You know. Yeah. All right. L let me take him. Okay, so the first one is yeah. actually a Trustmaster wheel that oh. we modified and because it was like one of the first formula wheel that comes come out on, on the, came out on the market, yeah. actually. But nothing on the wheel was working. Like this thing was not on the wheel. <laughs> yeah, here. I know. So add plastic and nothing else on, yeah. on this one. So yeah, basically we modified the shifter. You can see how short is yeah. the, the movement. Uh, we modified all the encoders to work like this, this one, this works, uh, this works, and these are the same uh, like encoders that yeah. I had on the other wheel. So you're actually using this one yeah. with these two in the same way yeah, of, yeah. of the Audi, let's call it that way. And all the buttons as well are functioning. So yeah, basically this is the first wheel that I really used because I started racing on simulator with this thing. I think I remember we were on R Factor One mm -hmm. at the time. So yeah, the first like esports uh, events I was racing with this thing right here. So yeah, I'm. You're proud of it. Yeah, I'm proud of it. It really. looks ama it looks amazing. Did you actually yeah, yeah. switch the the quick release to a metal one? Oh, yeah. In the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is also <laughs> designed by Admin. As you can see in yeah. here, wait a second. In here you have those pins yeah. that went straight to the QR side of the car. Yeah. So if I, if I was using, because I was using that car when I was racing, because this simulator when I'm, when I'm here now didn't exist. Yeah. Just going here and using this car module. And the wheel goes straight up, and it's working. Oh, you so can no, still do that? It works again. Oh, dude, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. That's like <laughs> a, I, that's a dream. Yeah, exactly. And, when, and I can switch whenever I want yeah. with the next generation of wheel that is maybe our best project before the, the GWT. Yeah. That is basically this wheel right here. So it's 
something else from the the other stuff that I showed previously. Yeah. And this is something that came out entirely from us. So from the aluminum CNC work to every switch to the actual screen of it, the shifters and the QR as well, that is the same that yeah. we have on the Trustmaster one. So yeah, this is actually the first ever, uh, can I call it, like like the, a real deal from yeah. us. This was the first. Your first own project without modif yeah. without modifying, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, this, is, this was entirely created by us in, I think, 2015, 2016. Wow. Yeah. You have a very, very long history in building stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the car behind me as well, this thing right here. Yeah. The first version, we did it in 2011 too. Like in 2011, I, I was in there driving with our factor one. It's so funny <laughs> when you like, uh, that's why I wanted to do a podcast uh, with you, like uh, in an episode, because you did so many things just for yourself, because probably because you were annoyed about the stuff you can buy and unsatisfied. And you said to your dad, can we build it? And then you just did like, you have a half F1 car in your room, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. You that's have your because... own quick release. Yeah. Yeah, like at the time, not, nothing existed. Yeah. I have some videos on YouTube that maybe you can show later. Yeah. That show effectively that in 2011, we, were, we weren't using this QR. Yeah. But we were using another QR. And it was working. So in 2011, I was using QR on the Audi steering wheel mm -hmm. and on another one that was like something looking like the Red Bull old like butterfly wheel, like yeah. the William. Yeah. I, I have one of them here, but it's fixed to the wall. So I cannot really take it at the, at the moment. But yeah, that, that is where we started. And yeah, we never sold anything in the first like three years. It was all passion and nothing else. Yeah. We, we wanted to create because it was fun and because nothing existed. I would never think that, oh, okay, I'm, I can sell something because there was so much work behind the basis because you cannot, like, you had to rework the Thrustmaster T500. You have to rework the entire Logitech G27 because yeah. they were heavy and those Motors, those servo, like I, I don't know how they're called in English. Those engines before the uh, direct belt, drive belt driven, yeah, belt driven. Yeah, that they, they were not strong enough to like sustain a 1.5 kilograms wheel. Yeah. basically, it was all plastic before. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have we had to modify the engines as well. Like we had, <laughs> yeah, we created we created a fully metal. CNC G27. It's in the it's on the internet. You, oh, you, you, <clears throat> you need to give yeah, me the link so I can put it in the description. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, can yeah, check yeah. It. Absolutely. I will send you to my old channel. Yeah. That is like the last upload of that channel is like 2012. And there are like 40 videos of all our experiments. I mean, you call it experiments, right? Yeah. yeah I'm, yeah, I'm sitting right. here and, and, and uh, talk to myself while you're talking because I'm really excited about it when you talk, uh, when, when you talk about this stuff. It's like, okay, he's saying experimenting. I wish I could do that. All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so after a while, like we have 2024. Are you still enjoying it to build stuff? As um, as before? Yeah, absolutely. Now it's more challenging. So you have to put more effort to like try the best out of yourself because there are so many brands at the moment, mm -hmm. so many good products as well because at the time there, there, there was no good product a anywhere. So uh, of how we imaginated them because, you know, there, there was some good products that was somewhat that were somewhat something something else basically mm -hmm. there, were, there was plastic everywhere really s simple things basically 
nothing with telemetry, nothing with data on the wheel itself. So just something that you were holding with your hands and driving, yeah. nothing else. But yeah, maybe to, at this moment, yeah, it's way more challenging. So you have to <clears throat> like put the, uh, the 100% of effort in it every day to understand what the other brands are using, screens, buttons, encoders, how many lights, how fast a wheel can be connecting to the PC, how flawless a wheel is, the, what material they're using, the techniques. There's like a million things around this, these peripherals. They are crazy. The, the level of development there is, there's, there's in this kind of object is crazy at the moment because I can, I can like say publicly that this level of sim steering wheels are like better than the real racing steering wheels. Like some aspects. Yeah. I'm not talking about the technology inside of them because the technology in real racing wheels is something else. Like you, you are talking with a main board, with the main board of the car. There's another language. There's other codes. So yeah. don't think about that. We are using USB right here and the software that brings out every data that we, that we can extract. So basically, yeah, I'm talking about the shifters, the buttons, the, the feedbacks of everything, the grips, the technique about the CNC, like caving on the, on the aluminum. Yeah, it's crazy. It's that, that there's no, this, this level of details, there's nothing like this in real world at the moment. Yeah. It's crazy. So, so you have to put a lot of effort in it. Yeah. That's about the point uh, I, I wanted to, uh, to ask you. How long did you develop your wheel which you're selling right now? Okay, so the first ever day that we decided actually to go for this wheel was from, I think, the end of 2021. Yeah. <laughs> It's like two, two and a half years at the moment. So yes, yeah, start, the starting of 2022, basically, was the first time that we actually drew some lines, basically. Desi decided to go for, a, for an extreme wheel, something, something really good, uh, like aesthetically, functionality, and all together. We, went, we wanted to, to go higher, higher level, basically, from this. Yeah. So well, not from the <clears throat> other that are already on the market. We are 20 minutes in and nobody did ever see the wheel in this like okay. podcast. I guess we can reveal the wheel right now, which yeah. you were making for two and a half years. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, all right. Two and a half years. I need to ask you yeah. some questions about it. All right. Okay. Show us. Okay, so I can show you directly from my webcam. So this is how it looks at the moment. So the wheel is completely made out of aluminium material and it's fully CNC. So there is nothing that is applicated on the front. Yeah. And yeah, basically everything comes from one piece of aluminium, one big piece of aluminium. This is the back when you can look at the six pedal. Every pedal is obviously made in aluminium and everything on the back is developed by us. So Every mechanism, every shifter, the throttle, the, the throttle, the clutch. And yeah, basically everything is being designed, tested uh, by me, by other people that I know uh, to make it like the best that we could get from our job, basically. And the handles too are made by us. We created our own mold system, uh, our like material. So yeah, we I think we had we yet got uh the best like result we could imagine like two and a half years ago. That is this one at the moment. So yeah, basically this is the wheel. This is how it looks. Mm -hmm. and this and is how we can buy it. Yeah, basically this is what came to you if I, if you buy this thing. Nothing 
<laughs> not equal to this thing right here. But yeah, mm -hmm. you can personalize it. You can choose what color for these buttons, what color for all the shifter module, what color for the handles, what color for the front encoders, for the joystick. Yeah, you can choose a lot of things. Even you can choose if you want the shell to be like colored or personalized with like wrapping also. We can offer that too. So yeah, there's a lot of personalization if you want. If you want to, yeah. If you want. I, I want to. But that's a, a different story. Yeah. <laughs> Later on, I mean, I, I'm saying it in, in, in my stream every time. I really want to own one. Like yeah. own to to have it like to drive and have on the wall. I'm like, I'm going to do that, <laughs> but that's not the point today. I'm really excited. Like I'm 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 smiling when I see it because I had um, the pleasure to talk to you already about it, yeah. and we will talk about the, the the features in that wheel, which makes it like really crazy and very good. And yeah. th uh, thought through, but let us like go into your head. What did you do in this two and a half years? Like, how did you start, and how did you test it? And like, give us uh, some perspective what you did in that two and okay. a half years. Yeah, sure. So basically, the first thing we had to decide the shape of the wheel. Basically, mm -hmm. this is a formula look-alike wheel. Basically, on the front you can see there is some zones of the uh, areas of this wheel that looks like a real life wheel basically mm -hmm. but yeah we then modified a lot of shapes like on, on this part we like modified all the layout that in real life is totally different and all the back obviously is totally different from a real life formula car wheel because they have like some push pull pedal that is one one thing basically it's not separated pedals in the in the Formula One car, so we wanted to do something like we meshed up like proto specs and formula specs and mixed them together, and we had something like this basically with six separated pedals that you can use however you want. They are like interchangeable if you want. So for people that need to like use their hands to drive completely the car. Maybe you can switch the clutch, bring it on the on this part, mm -hmm. on the middle, so you can use the accelerator and the brake too. So we think about the modularity mm -hmm. of the wheel. So like grips are interchangeable too. If you are a little bit experienced, you can open up the wheel. Mm -hmm. you, you will take all the responsibilities <laughs> as well. Yeah, all right. <laughs> But if you want, you can just send the wheel to us because like wait a second i can show to you how the grips are made let me just we get a full tour today the, yeah like these are colored as well as i was saying before we can offer like colored handles too and as you can see you have two six screws that you can like use to yeah. fix this to the actual shell of the wheel mm -hmm. because as you can see i have a shell right here dude i, I dude i love you It's like a, <laughs> no, I'm talking to you like with so many so much joy because you you love what you do. That's amazing. Yeah, basically, yeah, it's like that. This is the aluminium shelf that yeah. we are talking. This is empty right now. So if you open it up, you will see that here on the back mm -hmm. there are those little screws right here, and you can like put the handle right here. Yeah, it, it will fit perfectly, and just go with the screws and yeah, job is done basically all right so i mean i mean you can you can do that too on on other wheels but uh i don't know how how it looks inside that's like yeah yeah that's it. that that color combination looks amazing is that purple yeah, yeah. yeah no it's pink right it's like see yeah fluo pink something like that i need that <laughs> yeah if you want we can do it absolutely we have a lot of colors in fact but Yeah, it's on a request we can do anything basically. Yeah, it's not a problem. So you you went to to paper and like made a sketch, and then uh, yeah, and then we the next step was like uh, design all the wheeling 
in 3D, like mm -hmm. a step file. Uh, it took so much time because like 3D design is so hard if you're not like experienced. And we did some tries and at one moment, uh, like God looked at us and said, go to that guy, he's going to help you. So we met this guy that actually helped us designing it mm -hmm. in 3D. Yeah, so like in one month, he sorted everything out and helped us to like create everything. The shifters, everything around the wheel has been designed by us in 3D. So not only the shell, but as well the handles, all the shifter module, all the, the pedals, and as well the encoders. Yeah the joystick, the, the buttons as well, and these uh, rotaries yeah. on, the, on the left side and on the right side. And as well, we designed those little plastic thing here that filters the, the LEDs, lights. Yeah. So yeah, basically everything on this wheel is, has been designed by us and is made in, uh, in CNC, basically. So the, the buttons comes from CNC machines too, even if they are plastic. So yeah, it's, it has been like a really long story about how we design it and other that stuff. But apart from the design, there's the electronic looks. Mm -hmm. So basically what we have inside the wheel yeah. is a PCB that we also designed with another friend that do that for job. So mm -hmm. he, he helped us a lot on designing the PCB, placing every little detail, the buttons, the encoders, the LEDs on the, P on the PCB. Then we, later, we developed the screen itself because it's not uh, a common screen. display that you find on, yeah, yeah. on the other wheels. It's something that we created and maybe we can like explain how it works, maybe? Yeah, sure. Okay. So yeah, basically, it's something that is not using USB connection at the moment. It's using the Wi-Fi connection to be connected to the PC, but only the screen. Like, the wheel is working via USB cable. Uh -huh. As you can see from the back of it, we have this cable uh -huh. in the back that is going to, like, make work the inputs, the LED output, and the power for the, for the wheel to work. Then... Apart from that, there is this screen, this unit inside here, that you can connect very simply to the PC using your phone the first time that you're booting up this wheel at your home. Two QR codes will pop up here, and it will guide you with your phone to connect this wheel to your like router or yeah. your PC or whatever you want. And from that time, basically, you will never have to do that again. So every time the wheel boots up, it will instantly connect to your network. Yeah. And you will never have to think about it again in, in your lifetime, basically. But you will ask why we went for something like this. Do you, you know, want to like... do the podcast by yourself? I mean, I'm, no, no, I'm, no. I'm, I'm leaving <laughs> because you, you ask yourself. That's fine, Federico. Let's go. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So basically, in, in all our experiments, we encountered a lot of problems with USB screens yeah. in the past. Now they are fixed, but we wanted to, to do something else. Mm -hmm. So the first reason was troubleshooting, basically. So we, we don't want any problem. So we're going Wi-Fi, basically. Mm -hmm. There's no latency. There's no lag. And in fact, it's better because this screen right here is going at 60 FPS per second, uh, 50 frames per second, when the USB limit is at 30. Mm -hmm. It's it not change anything because you were just watching data going on here. You're not like playing Fortnite on this. <laughs> well, I mean, you can, but it's, I think it's not worth it. But yeah, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more fluid. It's a lot more like, uh, how can I say it? Smooth. Smooth, yeah. Yeah. And apart from that, one thing that we are developing is that you can use different softwares on this and switching between them directly from the wheel. You didn't know about that. 
No, that's the first time I hear that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise, Mama. So, <laughs> so basically, now we're based on CMAB, but one day, what we want to do, maybe it's going to uh, JRT. So we are just switching from the wheel, like with one button, yeah. like pressing this one, and you will be displayed JRT here with wheel calculator and stuff. Yeah. Then we'll click again on this, and CMAB will pop up again. So this will be possible in the future. We're developing it. It's not already possible. <laughs> what is already possible is something else that is like controlling CMAB by your, your own on the steering wheel that is like this. So basically, with the joystick, you can go there and choose whatever dash you want to use. So basically, yeah, I'm just selecting back the, the lovely dashboard and I'm happy with that. So yeah. I'm selecting it back. But yeah, it's something that we can do, you can do on this wheel. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just like little things you can. You can do like step up on your wheel. And yeah. It's like every time we talk, like every time, it's the third time we're sitting here. Yeah. And every time you come, oh, we did something new. Did you know that already? You can, <laughs> you can like switch software, and then we have like yeah. this thingy majiggy, and we have this and that and this. Oh, by the way, yeah, I have another feature. Did I tell you about that? So, <laughs> I need to know something from you. Yeah, you have like, do you have two buttons on the wheel which are really, really, really rare? The the ones for the thumb. What was the idea for that one? Can you can you show that please on the wheel? Oh, the the two right yes. here. Yes. The yeah, yeah, they're really comfy at all. Uh, the, the first thing that we think about designing the wheel. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question actually, because it's something very important as well. Yeah. Because the real F1 car mm -hmm. has those kind of buttons in here, but they are really thin and not obviously backlighted as well. What we wanted to do was putting some good-looking backlighted buttons in here. And what the first thing that actually we wanted was the comfort of the driver. So basically, the position of the, the buttons was slightly changed to make, it, to make them as comfortable as possible for mm -hmm. you while you're driving. So basically, where, while you're at the wheel, you have nothing to do than this thing to get to this button, this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. So basically, you are not detaching the end to go to buttons that maybe can happen on other wheels. Yeah. So the first thing that we think about, yeah, was we, we, we have to make this comfortable for you, for who is using it. Mm -hmm. And another thing that is pretty comfortable is this rotary that goes <laughs> straight to the back of the wheel. Yeah. So... When you're driving and you're doing like some turns and stuff, if you're right here, you just go here with your finger. Dude, I can you're... even hear that clicking already. Dude, <laughs> I, I need that wheel. I can hear yeah. it every time you do that. All right, keep, keep going, keep going. So yeah, th this is everything. Every, every thing on this wheel yeah. was thinking for the final user. Not only to be good looking, Mm -hmm. Obviously, it had to, good, to, to look good. Yeah. But yeah, the first thing was like, I have to use this. And this is what I learned on track, basically, because sometimes I, I had a lot of wheels in my hands and I, was, and I was like, oh, this is not comfortable to do. Like, I have this big wheel in my hands and the buttons are here. Yeah. I, I, I have to detach my hand from the wheel and go like there. Yeah. Why? So, so that's the first thing that we actually think about when we were designing the layout. Then obviously, the other buttons that are here, you have to like detach your hands. It's yeah. physical. You, we cannot like put 20 buttons in here and leave all everything blank, obviously. Yeah. This thumb is also very comfy to get to use. And yeah, the feedback of every little thing on here matters a lot mattered a lot for us so yeah every encoder has his click everything is allows you to be as precise as possible with using the wheel basically when i'm reviewing it i'm already promising <clears throat> everyone out there watching this right now we're doing like a section 
in the review where I only record the sound of all the buttons. Yeah. And then you can decide like the the qualities of those buttons. I'm really excited to to have it in my hands because every time I hear those this wonderful clicking of every button. <laughs> it's so amazing and you tease me every time we talk. Not even <laughs> not not uh, that you want to do it but you do it all the time. So I have another question. And that's yeah. probably a very good question too. When you okay. had uh, the wheel in your hand and you showed it, you have like uh, three pedals in the back, like for the left side and for the right side. Yeah. And like if you if you can hold it up, please. There are like two red dots in the back. Why yeah, do you have those two backs, uh, those two buttons in the back? So basically, they're not comfortable buttons at all. But you don't have to actually use them because they are like functional buttons so you cannot set them like on iRacing you're not going to map mm -hmm. these two buttons these two buttons allows you to get into some shortcuts and some features that is that we already developed and some others that we are developing and will come in the future and so yeah basically sorry no worries. Uh, i can show every single feature on the wheel basically the first the most simple is by holding this one and going with the joystick up and down so we are just regulating the, the all uh, overall brightness of the wheel so the screen and the leds together mm -hmm. so maybe if you are a night race and just on the on the straight you go just like this and bam and you go down with the, the brightness and you will not get you blind okay <laughs> and stuff like that um so let's let's go ahead with the with the features. Yeah. The right side is like dash based, let's say in this way. Yeah. So basically one touch of this is going to be refresh. Okay. Because we are we are working Wi Fi with the dashboard, mm -hmm. as I said before. So if anything happens with the Wi Fi connection, never happened, but yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's something that is good to have. You like you just go like this and he's going to reload the dashboard if everything goes buggy or something or low frame rate yeah first thing to do is actually reload it and and the, or everything it's will will uh, look better yeah <laughs> the second one that you can do on the right side is the one that i did before actually so by holding this and the joystick together yeah we're just going straight into sim up <laughs> like this <laughs> all right yeah and you can go upside down and choose whatever dash you want. Mm -hmm. I'm selecting my personal right now because for the next feature I need it. Because it, it will be implemented in the lovely dashboard too. In the future, we're working on it. Yeah. So the next thing is, again, on the left. And with this button and the joystick together, we are going straight to clutch setting. Mm -hmm. So right now, these things are flashing. You can just hold the slave uh, yeah. pedal and yeah with the joystick you just regulating the value of of your clutch and that's it you can leave the pedal and press it that's it <laughs> you're mm -hmm. you're good to go and something else that we created but it's going to be used with description 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 yeah okay and by following the sporting code of the game that you're using as well, yeah, is the launch control, because you, you can like make him learn how to start. Okay, <laughs> there is no software that is learning or making something alone. Everything you can do with this wheel is record your own starts, and then tell to him, yeah, just replicate that start because it was good. So basically, when you're on the grid. Only in the games that allows you to do that. Okay, I'm telling this. <laughs> you can just go with this button, the, the left one. Yeah. So tick it. This first thumb button. Yeah. Because it's comfy, because you're starting, and you can see the red LED popping up. Yep. And when I leave him, it becomes red, and he do the start by himself. As you can see on the clutch setting, yeah. you saw the... The clutch going down alone. But yeah, this is this was something that I recorded. So it was my input. 
it's not creating yeah. some inputs on theories or on algorithms. Yeah. Yeah, you just need to recover it by yourself. You can do it by yourself on the wheel. Then will be a software where you can store all of your startings. You can save them. You can send it to your friends because they are they are files. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you just can select whatever start you want and it will flash instantly into the wheel. You love doing stuff like that, right? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, it's cool stuff, basically. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> launch control or always existed in Formula One uh, in the in the past. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and in other cars there is launch control. In like GTE cars had launch control. They they were not like starting with clutch or anything like the Porsche RSR. Uh, I knew because a friend of mine was driving it. Like on the Porsche wheel, you had like two buttons like this. Yeah. On the real Porsche RSR. So yeah, you get you get both of them clicked. Full throttle, leave the uh, those buttons, yeah. and the car was starting alone, basically from the pits. It's so, yeah, it's so amazing to to talk to you because you're like a, you're not a big company, right? It's like no. you and your dad, but yeah. you're so passionate that you wanted to provide like so many things for your money that yeah, I mean you 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 have like two buttons in the back. Which you like? You build a computer in your wheel to do stuff <laughs> with two buttons on your back. That's like insane. Yeah, there's there's basically a mini computer in in here. So yeah, we will. Anything is possible on this wheel, because it's something that works and think in another complete different way from the same from the uh, common like wheel. Yeah. yeah, basically what we think. And with all the like hints that we received from the outside, yeah, Federico, why don't you create this? And then I'm thinking, speaking with my other friend that helps us with firmware thing and stuff, and he's saying to, and I'm saying to him, yeah, Matt, you think this is possible? No, absolutely. Then the day after, oh yeah, Federico, it's possible. <laughs> I figured out how to do that. Yeah, <laughs> basically that's how it works. It it's never happening. But the, the day before, it's happening in some way. I don't know which, but yeah. It's are, like you, <laughs> are you are you driving the wheel by yourself, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So that's like, you need to be, you need to be really honest right now. Do you love driving this wheel? Like really passionate that you, yes, I don't want to switch this wheel anymore, ever. So to be 100% like true with 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 what i'm saying right now mm -hmm. i will say to you that with the with this wheel for example this wheel right here yeah sometimes i didn't like it okay mm -hmm. because some some cars I, it didn't fit some cars basically because the weight of this thing you can see that is concentrated in the in the higher part yeah okay so what i What I really like about this wheel is that everything is balanced. Like, you know, just looking at it, it's a rectangle. Yeah. Everything, the weight is balanced everywhere. Like, this thing is not falling anywhere because it's, it's balanced. I, if I put this thing into the, the Simo Cube and yeah. switch it off, it will fall off immediately like this. Okay. This thing right here, it doesn't. It's ultra balanced. And yeah, all the... All the things that we put on this wheel are, yeah, are like automotive grade at the moment. The buttons and stuff. I, from the moment that I created this thing right here, mm -hmm. I never switched it, never. <laughs> yeah, I'm completely like a hundred percent like uh, sincere. Yeah. Oh, no? okay. I'm not like selling stuff right here, right now. I'm not. Saying things that are not true, basically. Yeah, that's yeah, that's I'm fine. I mean, we we just we just talk to you and uh, about your passion. I mean, at the end, you it's yeah. Uh, if we are uh, honest, it's advertisement because we talk about your product. Yeah, yeah. But absolutely. that that doesn't really matter because we can uh, we can go into your head and 
see your your thought process uh, behind yeah, it. Yeah. So, but I, I I always want to do true advertisement. Yeah, that's fine. You do like. Like I believe if you, you receive this will and you don't like it. You have to say what you don't like because yeah. from there, I will learn what is not working well. Yeah, that's what I think basically. So and people need to 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 know because if a if a person like this will and wants it, mm -hmm. if a reviewer will say, "Oh, this will is overall very good," I don't like the encoder. That guy that wants the will will not say, oh, no, the encoder is not good. I will never buy it. I think he will buy it anyway. But it's it's correct that I receive that feedback. Yeah. So I will fix that encoder in the future. Yeah. And maybe make it better. That's what I think, basically. I have a, a question. Um, how many test wheels did you build? Or how many things did you test? In how many iterations to get to the point where you're at right now? That's a long answer. I, I, I will make short. I will make oh, it you short. can make it long, dude. I mean, I, I want to know it. And I guess people out there want to know how to build stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah. that it's not like, yeah, all right. I have, a, I have a CNC friend and he's doing this like that. So, yeah, no, keep going. No, no, no. Like... I have this this example right here for the CNC example. I have this perfect, perfect example. Yeah, I know you have that. That's because I have this question. <laughs> yeah. Like, you see this one? Yeah, I see. I see it. This wheel. Yeah. Is covered by like uh, wrapping mm -hmm. at the moment because those the, the these shells were made in the past. Yeah. And we and we were like experimenting with the factory that. That was doing the CNC work yeah. because for do for doing something like this, it's really expensive. So like some people may be passionate about the project and helps you with your project, even if they are not qualified the one hundred percent to do that kind of job. Basically, mm -hmm. like this guy wanted to help us in in any way possible, and they and he said, yeah, I. I like to do big stuff with my CNC machines. I have nothing, I have no machines to like work on something really precise, you know? Yeah. Okay. But we can try. And I will not charge you too much for that. Okay. So that, our, that was our first try. And the, the shells were not as good as these ones. Mm -hmm. So we had to test it. The first, the second, the fifth, the tenth. All, all they were not looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's why we wrapped them all. And later, months later, we came out with this CNC production grade that if you watch it with the microscope, yeah. you will not see anything that is not okay in this. Mm -hmm. Apart from the opening, because this is not screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you can see there. The, yeah, yeah. Um, missing, missing, yeah. But yeah, look at this. The quality is good. Yeah. It looks good. Let's say Decent. it like this. It looks good. <laughs> I I yeah, haven't yeah. had it. It's it's really good. I mean So and, how how many tries everything... did you do? Yeah. About the CNC? Yeah. Uh thirty. Thirty tries. Yeah. That's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a shit ton of money. Yeah, that's why it costs a lot to develop because you go, you're going with trial and error. Mm -hmm. Now, now, now we, we, we know what we have to do, but three years ago, we didn't know what to do. We, we think that all CNC machines were the same, and it's not like that. We, we think that all aluminiums are the same, and, and it's not like that because we are using like anti-corrodal aluminium mm -hmm. that is very good by absorbing the anodization. Yeah. And there we and a lot of uh, characteristic that this type of aluminium has, because there are some aluminiums that maybe are cheaper, but they lose anodization after a, a little bit of usage, yeah. and it's not good. Okay, so all of these things, you you cannot know everything before going into something for real. Yeah, basically, from 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 the extern from from an external point of view, it seems that people that are doing this are like stupid maybe sometimes because you do some stupid errors basically. 
but because you don't know actually yeah. about that. Like the screen. I I told you about the screen, yeah. you know? Like before, this screen right here, we were using a 480 pixel screen. And I was thinking that it was okay because, you know, I have to watch like numbers on it. Yeah. Nothing too crazy. But yeah, then I discovered that a lot of wheels, that mostly oh, every wheel mm -hmm. at the moment, is using the Vocor with 800 pixels on it. Yeah. And it was like three weeks ago, not that long ago. And so, yeah, in like one, one week, we had to like try to find a, a, a display that, fix, that fits our own electronic. And yeah, we found it. But as I told you before, I had to tell the people on like my Discord, yeah, the screen is 480. And like three people comes out and say, ah, oh, 480? That's, that's not too good, I think. <laughs> And then, and I was like, yeah, okay. And now, what people <laughs> uh, yeah. are using at the moment, like, like it's vocal that high resolution. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh shit, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can imagine your reaction when you're reading yeah. the disco. Oh, yeah, I was terrified no. at the moment. So right now we're mounting this display that is like high definition. Right yeah, now. that's really high definition. Yeah, you can see how how good it looks. And this an IPS, so if you go like this and like this or like this, it always displays Dude, the same. Dude, like it's an IPS panel in yeah. your screen, in, in your wheel. Yeah, because because you when you're turning the wheel, maybe you go upside down. Yeah. And and when you're like this, yeah, you have to be very good about like reading things upside down. But yeah, <laughs> it may be not too clear to see at the moment. So yeah, it's an IPS. Dude, you have out. a you have an <laughs> IPS panel. Like yeah. there, are, there are so many people out there. They don't even have an IPS panel on their on their desk, and you have an IPS panel in your in your. Oh, screen. my simulator screens are not IPS. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically. So yeah, but yeah, that, that that this is something that you learn if you're passionate about something. Yeah, and you constantly go with tryouts. I can try. I can try. Like, wait a second. I have plenty of errors right here, everywhere. That's actually the the greatest moment when you uh, when when we talk. It's like wait a second, and you stand up, and you know something really great is coming. Yeah, like for the for the external hub of the wheel. Yeah, we we made this thing, you know, mm -hmm. to, so you can connect actually the Simo cube, everything with fifty millimeters, mm -hmm. and everything with the seventy millimeters. Yeah, without without dismounting the wheel because this thing goes right on the back of this other thing <laughs> that is coming out from the wheel. Yeah. So it is like this and you have the space between this and the pedals to yeah. work and fix your own QR and yeah. stuff. But yeah, this thing is laser cutted and you can see the screws yep. are bad. You can see all yeah. the holes are, are not good. Th this is an experiment. and. This we did like 20 pieces. Oh. Every everyone throw it off because on CNC this is the result. It looks better. Yeah. You can use it at least. This is <laughs> you not use usable. It. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. So yeah, experiments. Um can you please uh explain the thinking behind your yep. LEDs in the wheel. Why did you see and see like the the plastic covers and the buttons? Yeah, okay. So I can explain really fast. I will show to you directly. Yeah. So this is actually the plastic that goes underneath the encoders. Yeah. And to do with this material that is opal plastic mm -hmm. that filters really really good the 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 lights that comes from yep. from like underneath it uh, we had to like buy the material and do like this in cnc because doing a, an overmold of this material cost like crazy at the moment for yep. us so yeah we went fully cnc with the buttons too and this is our button basically yep. i hope it will focus better on the button because we I have to explain something about it. Is yeah, we it can see. Yeah. 
Okay, so as you can see, there is a plan and there's, there's a border that is higher than the plan. Yes. In the center. So yeah, that's basically uh, why why are we doing this? Because <laughs> the stickers that goes on the wheel yes. will fit perfectly in the holes. So you can't put it like uh, wrong, like wrong in. Uh, you you in... cannot put them wrong. Yeah, because they will not they will not fit. Uh, and the most important reason is not to make it easier for people to like teach them, but the most important thing is that if you're using gloves or hands and stuff, it's really easy if we don't have a border to like ruin the the the, the sticker border yes. as well. But with this border in plastic, mm -hmm. it's like repaired from your uh, from your thumb. Yes. So you'll never going to ruin your stickers. And these stickers right here, <laughs> I think I'm using them. This is my test wheel as well. Yes. And yeah, so these stickers are like, I think two years old at the moment. And you can see. And they the look condition. like new. Yeah. So yeah, it's... and the quality of the CNC of this thing is not perfect as the latest latest because as you can see there's some yeah defects on it yeah like you see those all those like writings yeah right now nothing it's like a piece of paper in the same area you can see there's yeah no lines everything looks perfect it seems to be like plastic is doesn't like look like a, like aluminium at the moment <laughs> a lot of people is asking me if this is plastic but you know oh the wheel we have not plastic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because it looks like too good for being <laughs> like aluminium anodized aluminium i'm going it's like I, as i said i'm excited to like to test it i'm i can't wait oh yeah i'm excited as well because i want to see people's reaction about this this thing because basically it's like my my son basically <laughs> after I mean, all this time and years yeah. of development yeah I, was about I to want say. to be I want to see people happy by using it basically nothing else uh, so let's let's ask the the big question right now yeah what does it cost at the moment yeah so the, the price The price tag of this thing is 2.5k euros with all like taxes included and stuff. So that's the finished six pedals will cost uh, price. Uh, and for the four only pedals version, it will be 2.3k. Yeah, correct. So yeah, but the two different versions, 2.3 and 2.5k at the moment. Yeah. Which you get a sh shite ton of stuff for, to be honest. Like when we like when we talk about it right now, you you get a, yeah. a, a lot of stuff for it. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you have any plans for the future? Like, yeah, absolutely. Because as you see in this room, yeah, we are not like only used to produce wheels, but everything else because the pedals inside that copy that cockpit are also developed by us <laughs> so yeah basically in the future what we want to do is work on everything basically and it depend it will be depend on if the project will continue to be only me and my dad of the, or the thing will be bigger in the next years because we want to to work on team rigs uh, on cockpits on pedals maybe active pedals too Uh, wheels as well and yeah maybe uh, F1 team who knows <laughs> like you have no. so you have so many dreams so yeah absolutely the good thing is we we talked about like all the stuff for an hour right and we saw all the stuff you built already for an hour so when you tell us Right now, yeah, maybe pedals, maybe this, maybe that, maybe this and that. 
I like for example, I believe that you come up with that stuff and I'm excited for it because like all you did to that wheel with that mini computer in there I've never seen so many great things in a wheel for that amount of money. Yeah, that's true. At the moment, at least, uh, yeah, it's something particular. It's not something like you are used to see on the market. And it's something that costs a lot to make, basically, Mm -hmm. because that's why of the price tag. But yeah, it's also something that has for me the correct value actually aesthetically and with the functionalities that he has it's not something simple yeah that's what i'm saying it's not some like display with some buttons connected to aluminium and here you go Use yeah it. we want to make this wheel like standing alone completely i don't want you to use your computer like yeah, yeah. Maybe if to start iRacing, racing, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, or a set of course or whatever. But yeah, I want you to like be not like using softwares. We, we we are not sending you a software for this wheel, nothing. Only something to update the firmware. But in the future, we want to update the firmware directly from here. Yeah, we don't want you to like go to the software or download. Uh, yeah, no. Everything I want to do from here, basically. That's why we started to like implement the overall brightness thing, yeah. the dashboard thing, the launch control, the fact that you can actually um, uh, record your own starts. And oh, another feature that I was <laughs> missing. It's not a, not a feature. That yeah. I, I mean, it's something that could be useful in a moment where something goes like um, something goes wrong with the PC because this wheel cannot go wrong at the moment because we are like, uh, I think it's one, one and a half year that we are flawless Mm -hmm. with this wheel at the moment. I've done like thousands of hours of testing and you asked me before something that I didn't respond. Actually, there are six units at this moment that, they are already existing and working well with mm-hmm. no problems. So yeah, we just we did we already did six test units around of Italy. And yeah, the final feature I was saying if anything goes wrong, like a USB froze on the PC, something bad happening, yeah, these two buttons, you just have to click them both together. Wait a second, like this? And yep. Bam. You're rebooting, actually, your wheel. And where you're seeing colors right here, yeah, it's ready to go. That's what I wanted to hear. Thank you very much that you, that you showed it, because that was the thing when you catched me the first time when you showed me that. That was like, no yeah. cable, jiggy majiggy, yeah. or like taking the cable off or stuff. No, it's just like pressing two buttons. Yeah, and that's genius. Least- yeah, at least you're not losing the race. You're yeah. losing like three seconds, two seconds for the reboot, actually. And yeah, you're ready to go again. Yeah, obviously, if the PC has major issues, yeah, can't do anything. But yeah, for anything that could be like USB port related, cable related, anything else, some like power missing power things, or I I don't know actually what can happen. I, I never use them, basically. I'm using them for testing, for like uh, doing reboot tests yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, basically, I I never use them. But yeah, they are there, and they can help you sorting big problems out and not throwing away like 150 points of I rating, but maybe just 20. You know, it's better like that. I have one final <laughs> question for you, Federico. Yeah. How did it feel to finish the first wheel, like? The finished, finished one and having it in your hands and driving it. How was that feeling? Uh, I don't actually know because it's never finished for me. Like, I, mm. I honestly think that this thing right here 
can be de developed forever because it's something that good with every aspect that I don't want to be like finished like this. Maybe in a year there will be three more features like the the one that I was telling you about yeah. the, the the software switch, you know. So yeah, I'm really happy to see the mechanic thing finished. Yeah, that, that's because, what I that, that's what I mean. That's right. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. Because it it has been a long journey to sort every detail out, the clutch, the the ratio of the clutch, uh, uh, everything basically of, of this wheel is, has been. I don't know even how to describe it. It was like I don't know some some like fantasy book that is like infinite and never ends. <laughs> not even like uh, did you did you not cry nothing like no, no emotion? No no no. Like for example, I can tell you this because we solved it. Yeah, we had uh, an issue with the new screen, mm -hmm. and I solved it yesterday. Like yesterday I mm -hmm. solved that issue and I was like writing to all the customers mm -hmm. that we were having that issue. I personal, personally called everyone and explained it to them that with the old screen, this issue never existed, but the, with the, the new one, basically, this like issue created herself, it presented to us. And the issue was basically that sometimes when you were starting the wheel, the screen was not centered. It was like a little bit offset to the right. Yeah. Okay. But it, it was something that happened only at the start of the wheel. If you're using it, if it booted correctly, it was not happening that randomly, bam, it goes sideways. So if it's correctly working, it was not like bugging while using while using it. Yeah, it was from the start. So the the problem solving was like two buttons, bam. Okay, correct. That's it. But no, it's not something that I want to see on my wheels because think about it. Uh, like a non a non expert sim guy mm -hmm. buys the wheel, install it, first time. Switching it on, offset the screen. What does he think? Honestly, it's two and a half grand for my ass. Yeah, correct. He takes his phone, he does a good photo, and maybe post it on Reddit saying, "Yeah, Grey Wolf Technologies," and I'm finished. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, first thing was the customer experience and the second thing is yeah i'm a little guy if something went wrong goes wrong on my devices <clears throat> yeah it's difficult to me to recover rebuild myself yeah, yeah to recover exactly so we try yarded for like three days and actually we found the problem and we solved it and i'm very happy about it yeah that feeling of solving the problem and not seeing that problem anymore You know it's good. Oh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I could hear it in your breathing at the moment. <sighs> yeah, because like the last night, I, and as I was telling to you before, yeah, I stayed up until five in the morning, rebooting the wheel continuously. I did like three hundred reboots, and it never happened. So yeah, I went to bed at six a.m. basically, but. Like <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So we have uh, at the end a segment where I give the stage to you. Okay. So you can do whatever you want. You can make like the you can make advertisement. That's totally fine for me. That's uh, for me as a thank you for your time and being a guest. So okay. I'm just like um, giving you the time because. I will say to you guys out there, I'm switching to German, Federico, but I will translate okay. it so you uh, you understand what I what I uh, told okay. them. Okay, yeah, sure. 
Äh, Dankeschön, dass ihr euch die Folge äh, angeschaut habt. Ich hoffe, ihr konntet mal ein bisschen hinter die Kulissen äh, schauen, was denn bei Produktentwicklungen also für eine, ja, was, was damit reinspielt, um äh, zu so einem Ergebnis zu kommen. Und ja, es war sehr ausführlich auch äh, über das Wheel. Und ich hoffe, euch hat das sehr viel Spaß gemacht. Wenn ihr Bock habt auf mehr sowas, könnt ihr mir das äh, sehr gerne sagen, weil so ein, zwei Leute kenne ich noch. Und äh, dann können wir diese Gespräche auch mal mit äh, anderen Leuten führen und dort mal schauen, was wir so erfahren können, was hinter solchen Produkten steckt. Und jetzt gehen wir zurück ins Englische und geben Federico das äh, Antwort. So I told them that we that I'm really happy that you gave us some insights on yeah how to do or how to make things uh, before you sell them and what's all the passion about like yeah. developing things like that and I'm uh, very happy that you took your time to talk to us today about your product and yeah. I guess I am excited and I guess people out there will be excited too to see all the features because there are some features I've never hold in my hands and I'm yeah. really excited <laughs> about it so I give you the stage Federico thank you for being here today and maybe If people want it, we bring you back and okay, you yeah, sure. tell us something about like all the other stuff you're making in the near future, probably. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can do it. It will be a, a pleasure for me to explain things and tell everyone how we how we're working, how how we think about how we think about things. Yeah, that's yeah. what you did today, and that was really amazing yeah. to to get in your head what you were thinking <laughs> about. So I give you the stage, Federico, to finish uh, the podcast, and the stage is yours. So thank you very much if you're here again about like an hour listening to how we how we work, how we think, and and everything else, our path by building everything that you you're seeing basically in this room and right here. So yeah, basically you can just have a visit for to, to us. You can pay a visit for to us on our website. That is graywolftechnologies.it uh, and uh, on our Instagram basically or TikTok. There's always Graywolf Technologies. So you can follow for all the updates and uh, yeah, you can stay tuned on our creation. We are actually developing other models that will be more affordable in the future. But yeah, that's this is what it is at the moment. So I want to thank a lot this for this like uh for this view, for this like uh how it's called? Insights about your wheel? Advertisement? Yeah, no the space you gave me. Oh uh, yeah the yeah the stage. Yeah. So thanks to this for the stage that he gave me and this opportunity to talk about my and my dad's work. So yeah, that's that's basically it. I I'm out. You can find everything in the description uh, to Federico and Grey Wolf Technologies. Uh, we will give you the links and uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching the video. Bye bye and see ya. <laughs>